from Newmarket, and Ken Granger calls the start. Thank you very much, Brough. Well, they are all in, as far as I can see. One or two of them just a little bit unsettled, while in the stalls, Akak Regiment has a uh, small problem there. The handlers uh, all clustered round him. But the others all waiting pretty patiently. One who won't appreciate this wait is uh, Prince Crow, who doesn't like being in the stalls too long. We do seem to have cleared it up now, I think. Should be a go. Yes, it is a go. They're under orders and they're away for the 1984 Cesarewicz. All the way in a pretty straight line right across the course. One of those uh, first to show is Bella Muse, one of the orange ones on the outside. You'll be pleased to hear, gentlemen, down in the uh, <laughs> nether regions there. Bella Muse making the pace in the early stages. Then after this, we have uh, Tom Sharp racing on the outside. This one just about in second, and between the two of them is Half Blessed. These three are clear and setting a steady pace to Canio running in fourth place. Then Moon Mariner on the outside, and then the other orange one, Tudor Singer, running back in seventh place. Azia comes after these, and then Sid Bollock and Ricky Tavey on the inside, Lobkowitz. This one is followed by Appeal to Me, then Popsy's Joy in the middle division, with Morgan's Choice and Valuable Witness, and on the outside, Buran Poor. But they uh, go away, they've completed just over two furlongs now, and we have, bl have Blessed on the inside. And it is Have Blessed who's setting the pace with Tom Sharp, and it's a pretty strong one now. So they go down a slight dip after this. We have, uh, after these two, Bella Buse running in the next position. But as you can see, these two out on their own as they go down into this slight dip with just over a mile and a half to race. On the near side, Have Blessed. On the far side is Tom Sharp. And they, as you can see on the picture, are 10, 12 lengths away, maybe from the next one, uh, which is Burren Poor. And they go down towards the uh, opening in the dike, and it's over to Rolly Gold. Yes, Ken, uh, Steve Dawson and Tom Sharp, Taffy Thomas and Have Blessed. These are the two leaders. They've gone just over three quarters of a mile now as they come towards the only turn in the Toad Cesarewicz. And still these two together, Have Blessed, nearest the inside rails and Tom Sharp, and they lead by miles now from Bella Muse three. Then going four is Moon Mariner, Canio five. Then Tudor Singer six, followed by Asia. Behind these is Cheeky Rupert. Then comes Oranella, followed by Symbolic. Also with that group is Lobkowitz. They're followed by Appeal to Me. The leaders are now passing halfway, and it's still Tom Sharp on the right. Spot that noseband and have blessed the only two in your picture. And there's still a good 15 lengths clear of the third place, Bella Muse. Then four, Moon Mariner. Five, Canio going well for Tony McGlone, followed by Oranella, Azir, Ricky Tavy making ground. Tudor Singer still there. Then after these comes Water Cannon, well placed now. Then Cheeky Rupert, followed by Popsy's Joy. Then Appeal to Me and Gay Calloway, the only girl in the race. After that one comes Kurosawa, then Treasure Hunter. Behind Treasure Hunter is Baron Poor. Then comes Akak Regiment, Prince Crow. The favorite valuable witness still has quite a lot to do. And the back markers at the moment in the Cesarewitch are Prince Crow, Jack Daw, Cheeky, Cheeky Rupert is dropping back. And the last two, 25 and 26, are Coral Heights and Old Another Sam. They're coming now towards the final five furlongs. And out in front now is Tom Sharp, who's been left clear as half blessed, finds the pace too strong, drops back into second. But here comes old Popsy's Joy. And with just over half a mile to go, it's Tom Sharp, the very clear leader in the Cesarewitch. Back to Graham. Well, they've only got two and a half furlongs to go. And if the field expect Tom Sharp to come back, they could be in for a shot. They've got just uh, two and a half to go, past the bushes, down into the dip. Popsy's Joy comes out of the pack to be second. Moon Mariner is third. Azier is fourth. Then comes Have Blessed. The favourite is Valuable Witness, but not in the picture at the moment. They go down into the dip. And Tom Sharp is at a lead of ten lengths, with a furlong to go in the toes of Zarowicz. Popsy's Joy is second. Valuable Witness coming with a run in third place. They're inside the final furlong. Steve Dawson has surely stolen the Cesarewicz on Tom Sharp, who is still eight clear from Valuable Witness in second place. Popsy's Joy third. Azier fourth. But Tom Sharp is going to win it in devastating style. Tom Sharp is the winner. Valuable Witness is second. A photo for third between Azir and Popsy's Joy, then Moon Mariner. Behind these, Buran Poor, Ricky Tavy, Morgan's Choice. Then came Appeal to Me, Lobkowitz, and behind these, Water Cannon, then Symbolic. The Owls, and behind the Owls came Kanio, and then Kurosawa, the back markers, Prince Crow, Jack Daw, and last of all, last of all to finish was uh, Tudor Singer, number 26. And so the result of this Totes Cesarewicz, it's a win for number 22, Tom Sharp. 
owned in partnership by Mr. MJ and Dr. H. Yarrow, trained at Melton Mowbray by Walter Wharton, a triumph for Walter and ridden by Steve Dawson, whose ninth winner of the season it is, and a triumph for him as well, in a winning time of 3 minutes 48.27 seconds. That, in fact, is just about a second outside the record. Second was number four, valuable witness, Pat Eddery. Has he ridden a good race? Did he give Tom Sharp too much leeway? Did he expect him to come back? Uh, Pops his joy is in a photo with the top weight in his ear for third and fourth, but that's uh, elementary, my dear Watson, because Tom Sharp has absolutely turned this race into a procession. The one thing he does is stays, and that's what he did. Let's see him do it again. There's a very, very old rule in racing that you can give away weight, but you can't give away distance. So one has to say that the jockeys on the fancy horses didn't just give away distance, they dished it out. They gave Tom Sharp, what did they give him, 30 lengths st start? They just said, oh, well, he's a no-hoper. He'd only run twice this year and been way out both times, but he had only run the twice. They said, he's a no-hoper. We won't bother about him. They completely let him go. He must have been 50 lengths clear, and in the end, he was, he'd run a perfectly ordinary race. He kept going, and here you are, Eddery and Carson and everybody else start galvanizing themselves, but it's much, much too late, and I'm afraid this is going to be an extraordinarily embarrassing replay for them, but... You've ignored a horse, it's always ignored at your peril. I remember being in races and you say, what's that up in front? Is it any good? And you say, no, no, it's useless, forget about it. Well, they made that decision and they've had to suffer for it. And as I say, coming back to scale, one or two of the gentlemen this afternoon won't be a particularly pleasant time. But all credit to Walter Wharton, who trained Tom Sharp. and.